This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. Click the Fight TV link on WrestlingMayhemShow.com to support this show and watch pro wrestling, MMA, boxing, and so much more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash WrestlingMayhemShow. Hey guys, Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here is the Indie Mayhem Show, uh, where we talk about indie wrestling with indie wrestlers and people around wrestling in general. Uh, you can check out the show on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeart Radio, and video versions on the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook and I uh, Facebook and YouTube page. And please support the show patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show uh we always like to uh you know get get some new people on every once in a while uh we've been of course following the careers as they've grown of of, of some of those names that are getting pretty popular like Britt baker and delilah doom just uh instagram with delilah doom with like uh, so many belts uh going on down there so good to see them and even popping up on raw so it's time to bring somebody new in and that is jinx joining us in the studio how you doing jinx good how are you (laughs) good so uh jinx has just debuted here with the international wrestling cartel uh the fortune uh to film one of your uh first matches at proving ground just a a couple months ago right yeah february february February. so well we'll get into that and and, and kind of your time there and in the ring so far and everything Uh, uh, but first, kind of, how did you get into wrestling? What's kind of your earliest memory of pro wrestling? Well, I guess long story as summarized as possible. I got into wrestling when I maybe like the start of middle school. I had, I was super anxious kid, did not want to talk to anyone. Ended up uh, starting doing online and homeschool because of it. And in that time was like the heyday beginning of youtube where they did not check like copyright or anything so basically just everything ever was on youtube and somehow from there i ended up just going into watching wrestling constantly with all of my middle school homeschool didn't want to go outside time and uh yeah fell in love with it from that for some reason, I never wanted to tell my family that I liked wrestling, so that's why I only watched <laughs> it on YouTube. Fun fact, no one in my family ever knew I even liked or knew anything about professional wrestling until I told them that I was going to start training. Wait, so were you, were you secretly watching it on YouTube in the yeah, bedroom, I would just spend, like on your computer? I and... would just find all the time like on my computer looking up wrestling matches, everything, mm-hmm. like old, current, everything like that. Mm-hmm. So for someone that's only 21 i have a vast knowledge of wrestling because you, re- you didn't really have a linear like i watch yeah. i started in the attitude era and watch x y and z no you, i think you- that's what's weird about like my pro wrestling watching experience is that i didn't really have a like oh this is the first thing i remember ever watching blah 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 it just kind of all like came into me at once because i found mm-hmm. it via the internet mm-hmm. so uh i spent a lot of time watching like ECW, stuff like that, older, just anything that I could find, Mm -hmm. really, I would watch because, again, at that time, there was no copyright, Mm -hmm. so... So like what, everything what, was there. Do you have an idea like what attracted you at first? Like was it a WWE match? Was it an ECW? Was it some kind of weird ultra violent thing or something? Or no, um, I don't really remember what originally i feel like it was probably just like randomly clicking through as you do on Mm -hmm. the youtubes but um you just one night you went down the rabbit hole (laughs) yeah exactly it was the beginning of going down the rabbit hole yeah i think definitely the originals that i ended up really loving were Rey mysterio and eddie guerrero and then i ended up i always say i still i love tajiri Mm -hmm. love tajiri chris benoit Everything like that. I started with that. And then what made me really fall in love with like the emotional aspect of the storytelling of professional wrestling was Mick Foley. People like that. So I feel like I definitely, Tommy Dreamer, uh, that made me really fall in love with like the storytelling aspect of like, oh, I want to be a part of being able to tell that story, not just watch it. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, I feel like I have a very vast plate of 
people that I love in wrestling that make no sense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just like everyone for so many different reasons. Mm -hmm. Which, yeah. So how did you go from that to saying, you know, I want to get in the ring. I want to do this. I want to, you know, get involved. Well, uh, maybe like three or four years ago, I started actually doing uh, pole fitness, pole dance classes. And from that, you get so much body strength doing that. Mm -hmm. Like after doing that for like a year and a half or so, I was actually, I became really fit, like super fit, really good endurance. And from there, that built the confidence of myself athletically that I was like, I can do this. And this is, you weren't like athletic in school or anything like that? Um, I was a dancer and a gymnast, but as far as like gym class athletics, hell no. Mm -hmm. Hell no. I was so bad at stuff like that. But I was a dancer and a gymnast as a child. Mm -hmm. I just didn't really, I didn't grow into it as much. It was more when I was like younger. Okay. And you went from there, and and how did you come across a wrestling school? By dumb luck. <laughs> Literally Google. Like, I just got so lucky <laughs> at being able to, It was the, uh, what was closest for me to drive to. And I ended up just being right place, right time, mm -hmm. and finding IWC. So, 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 yeah. what, uh, so you, you did you find it from, like, going to the shows, or...? No, literally just like Googling, <laughs> trying to figure out if there was anywhere that I could like train in professional wrestling mm -hmm. around where I was. And just by dumb luck, mm -hmm. that's how I found IWC. I really didn't have any. I had a little bit of knowledge of like Ring of Honor, things like that, but nothing really like indie wrestling mm -hmm. that. So it wasn't like going to shows or anything at all. Because I didn't really have anyone that I shared liking pro wrestling with at all. So it wasn't like <laughs> I had anyone that was like, let's go to a show or something like that. It was me being creepy in my dark room watching YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> so you went from that to to uh, training with IWC. I believe mm -hmm. you're part of Chris Russo's class, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so so what was was there a bit of shock about what we, what was involved in this or... Uh, or you had a good idea from YouTube. <laughs> no, I mean, it's definitely a different world. I mean, obviously. But I think it was something that I came in with a really good group of people. Mm -hmm. And I just somehow fell into it really well. Definitely, it's really tough. And it's a lot of work. But it gave me something to focus on and strive for. And like I said, it was just a group of good people to fall back on as well. People that I knew would come to my house and find me if I ever quit. So, uh, I, yeah, I just, I think a lot of it was getting really lucky. Definitely. And then finding something that I was really passionate about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You yeah. can definitely tell, um, cause you know, being at the shows filming, like we, we kind of keep an eye on like, you know, who's setting up the ring and stuff. You can kind of tell when there's going to be uh, a lot of good stuff out in the class about how serious they are during yeah. those. Because, like, I've seen, I've seen, like, you know, a couple of the trainees go and, like, they're shooting hoops while everybody else is trying to set stuff up and put yeah. out chairs. And and I have not seen them on the roster or maybe even after that show. You know, like, it's very it's very one-to-one -one what we see there versus sure. what, what, what comes out uh, in the ring. And I think this uh, proving ground, uh, you know, I was very impressed with how many students came out and you didn't see any huge missteps. Yeah. As far as like, it seemed like the, almost the entire class. We were told that by a lot of people, which made me really happy with mm -hmm. not just me, but everyone else. And it made me like, I hope that we made Chris proud. It's mm -hmm. like one of his or his first big training class as most people were like, there's usually at least like one match where you're like, uh, I've but had, that didn't I've come out of it. Edit, I'm sure you've seen them. I've seen. I've had to edit a missed drop kick out of a proving ground once, and you're uh, like, "Oh no!" <laughs> but like, there's always that one match where you're just like, "Oh, not sure about that one." You know? Oh, I don't want to put this online. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. Like, do I have to include this match? Oh, no. Would anybody miss it? Right? Yeah. That, that, that certainly happens. From especially this is proving ground is sure. is kind of the. The uh, I, 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 only because I do one of these shoots for my cu my cousin's uh, uh, um, 
businesses, like kind of the dance recital show piece, right? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And it's on a much bigger scale than a lot of people that mm. are just starting in professional wrestling get to debut on. Right. So, yeah. It, it's a show where, well, even just looking behind you, I have the Proving Ground poster up off camera, mm -hmm. and then right beside it is two shows afterwards has, like, Ricky Steamboat on it. You know? Which is so, mind-blowing. Yeah. It's so yeah. weird. Um, well, it, it, it seems that um, you get a lot of opportunities with that, too. Yeah. I mean, you, uh, just the, uh, you know, being around backstage, um, Meet a you know, lot of cool setting people. up the ring, like, like you you know, a lot of people come through the IWC International Wrestling Cartel. Yeah. Um, is there anything that's kind of uh, uh, seminars or anything like that that really kind of stuck out with you over the over the uh, well, year or so you've been training? Um, I really enjoyed learning from the first uh, seminar that I did was with DJ Z. It was very, very early into me training. So basically everything that he did in the ring went right over my head. Because it's DJ Z and he's a freaking god in the ring. <laughs> so he was going in there like, yeah, guys, you just like do this and this. And then you turn over like this and it's perfect. Yeah. And we were all like, oh, I'm scared to death. Mm -hmm. But as soon as he got out and was like breaking down matches with us and telling us about things to think about and things to work on, mm -hmm. that was stuff that really, really helped me a lot. Um Ray Rowe was really cool to learn from. He didn't do anything in ring at all. He just talked to us a lot. And he was the one that originally, like I was saying earlier, said that uh, moves don't matter. He was the one that originally was like, you can do anything like as long as you get people emotionally invested, mm -hmm. which that really stuck with me. Um, done a lot of cool seminars. Billy Gunn, he obviously taught us a lot. But for me, that was more of just like the culture shock of being like, oh, my God, I'm in a ring with Billy Gunn. <laughs> I was like, there's a picture that they posted on Twitter that had me dying because I'm just sitting there. I look like I'm staring lovingly at Billy Gunn. I'm just sitting there like, but really in my mind, I was like, oh, my God, it's Billy Gunn. <laughs> like, it's very surreal. And it's one of those things that it doesn't hate you. It doesn't hit you when it's happening. But later you'll be like, I'm doing all of this. This is mm -hmm. like... My 12-year-old self would not believe that for a second, that I've done any of this, which is really cool to be able to, whether it's, like, anything, it's cool to say that I've been a part of mm -hmm. so many things that I've never even thought about being able to do in the darkness of my room on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that everything goes back to in the darkness of my room on YouTube. <laughs> and from Because I was such like an anxious little, like I was super, super socially anxious. Mm -hmm. Dog. <laughs> but, uh, it's okay. We'll I will say that I told the dog that he was my boyfriend now earlier, and he immediately ran away from me. <laughs> yes, we were cuddling, and then he was. I was like, "Oh, you're my boyfriend now," and he was like, "We have to go." Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> the podcast dog. Um, well, anyways, speaking of proving grounds, I hear some images for you guys uh, that are online of uh, how that went for you. Of course, yeah. with the win over Samantha Heights, somebody who's been around for a good while in the area and women's was wrestling. Pretty cool. I don't have a. I need to work on updating my Facebook with cool stuff now more. <laughs> well, you'll have a match sooner or later as soon as I get I, that edited. But, uh... I'm better at Instagram. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. I'm better at Twitter because I like live blogging my life. Putting on my producer hat. Yeah. You've been tagged in the video and everything for Facebook. And mm -hmm. once we get everything finalized and put together, Twitter and Facebook, you'll get some notifications. And nice. Yep, definitely, That's good. Definitely. This will help with that. Because so. <laughs> I'm, I'm bad at Facebook for some reason. I'm um, like, it's hard to be like, hey, guys, like my page. I'm a professional wrestler. Uh, <laughs> those of you in the chat. Th those of you in the chat, this is a good time for you to go like her page. Go like yeah. my page. Love me. <laughs> wrestling's jinx if you're looking for the username out yes. there because there's a, there's a few jinxes out there apparently yeah that so. was my my original thing i was it was hard for me to consider like putting together like handles and stuff like that because mm -hmm. i was like it's really easy for the name to get lost in the mix mm -hmm. uh so i knew that i had to get some cool catchphrases and stuff like that but it came to me pretty well because i feel like 
Let's talk a little bit about uh, in ring here. You know, kind of the by imagery, you guys can kind of you got kind of a different look to you and everything, and and really kind of a different style in there. That's that's a lot of fun too. Thank you. Yeah, um, I have learned to embrace it as calling it kind of like a. I'm basically like if My Little Pony met a murder scene. <laughs> And she's wearing a Care Bear shirt yeah. in the studio, by the way. So um, all I do is talk about serial killers and wear bright colors. And uh, <laughs> in Ring, I like to turn that up to a million because you know, got to make it larger than life. Absolutely. And I enjoy doing that. Bring it all out to the surface because I didn't want to be the. I feel like being the dark brooding crazy girl that doesn't fit me not only is that like generic at this point but it also just mm. doesn't fit me to be like that right especially in an age where we have wyatt's and, and things like that yeah and, and whatever they're doing on tna with, i didn't want to be like discount yeah. aj lee and page you know right. right exactly uh that plus you know it just didn't fit me mm -hmm. to get all black and come to the ring looking angry it doesn't work uh so yeah, I have, I I love character aspects. I love promos and stuff like that. I'm excited to get more into like being more character oriented because mm -hmm. that's a lot of fun for me. Sweet. I like building on it. Awesome. Um, just th so there's several questions I won't ask on the show that are popping up in the chat. Uh, but I in case there's something here, they want me to ask you about Joe Rogers. What body look like? What happening? What's going on? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Everything I know about Joe Rogers, I learned from Daniel Hoofman. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> He's out there. Uh, I that know well. you're there. I know you're asking all of it. <laughs> and what's up, Justin Idol out there as well? Oh, hi, Justin so. Idol. <laughs> he taught me his death cardio drill once. I don't know if you remember it. Death cardio drill. Yeah, he does death cardio. And he did. I think he taught us like the little kid version of it, but... I still do it. So, so Hell baby Infinite. death cardio. Yeah, it was right? baby death cardio. It was death cardio for minors. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, I just know. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> cardio hell, he says in the chat. Right? Yes, cardio hell. So. Yeah, we did it once, and it, I still do it in Planet Fitness. Mm -hmm. Like every time I go in, and people give me weird looks, but it's okay because it works. <laughs> so as we were talking about beforehand you know you've got two matches with iwc you had a couple with uh black diamond as mm -hmm. well so you're four matches in here yeah. um kind of what is the biggest thing that kind of surprised you from actually getting out there in front of people it goes much faster than you'd expect it to mm -hmm. um for me like i said um i'm of i've been a kind of like very anxious i'm a energy pixie stick so my resting heart rate is panic attack so i get really nervous really easily um and i know that when we do just like practice matches in a little warehouse with like just us there sometimes it would feel like it dragged on forever mm -hmm. because you're like so scared of what's happening next what you're doing and uh but once you get out there in front of people, for some reason, it's so much easier. It's such a different aspect. It's I'm very surprised at how different it is, I guess, mm -hmm. than you. Every, anything that you learn in training, it doesn't compare to going out there. It's very interesting. What are your goals at this point? Um, Really, my goals are to just uh, keep improving keep getting in experience and whatever comes along comes along but i'm not really sitting here thinking like oh i want to go to like ring of honor wwe anything like that for me right now i'm just kind of focusing on getting as much experience as i can maybe doing uh more uh like managing roles and stuff like that because like i said i like doing characters i like cutting promos and things like that I can be the brightly colored sinister minister for anyone that needs me. But, uh, uh, yeah, really getting any experience that I can 
mm. is my main goal right now. Awesome. Learning. So what are you watching these days? Wrestling wise? Are there the, and, and is it still in the dark on YouTube? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> 100% because I don't have a television. Mm -hmm. uh, you haven't upgraded to New Japan World or WWE Network? <laughs> I have the network. Mm -hmm. I have the mm -hmm. network. I do. Um, it's like it's like a cleaner YouTube. Exactly. Absolutely. Or like a cleaner finding things illegally. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, I do have the network. I like Ring of Honor a lot. I find Ring of Honor from a wrestling aspect is really cool. Uh, I really liked the latest, uh, the New Japan friggin' the Wrestle Kingdom. Wrestle Kingdom. <laughs> I was like, what is the word that I'm looking for? Wrestle Kingdom blew my mind. That was pretty awesome to watch. Uh, that wasn't lately, but I'm still very in my old mindset of just like keeping up with whatever i can find mm -hmm. i don't really stick to like watching things as they come out for some reason but mainly because i get distracted so easily <laughs> but uh yeah i like to watch whatever i can find i've been watching lucha underground lately because it came out on netflix mm -hmm. i do have netflix as as one should do as, as all one should, should do. as one yes. should um yeah lucha underground's awesome I love it because it's basically just a soap opera with really good wrestling involved. So it's really fun. But yeah, I keep up with a little bit of everything. Try my best. Awesome. So what's the best and worst thing so far uh, about about indie wrestling or even the training leading up to it? Um, The best thing is definitely just the experience as a whole. Uh, just learning from everything meeting so many different people and the weird stories and fun things you get out of it and uh the worst thing was uh falling in front of uh gore time that was bad <laughs> wait what happened you did, did you see me fall during a second row crossbody i think i missed because it. i was of my blood loss no i missed that well we haven't put that online yet i was i guess it's in the facebook live but, there's, but... it's on the facebook uh the it was on the pre-show yeah yeah um was... i will preface with it with it was still a lot of fun yeah. it was still a fun match and I got cool pictures out of it, mm -hmm. and that's what matters. Wait, is that this? Um, hold on, this, this picture from the top here. Yeah, yeah. Oh wow! It was inside my lip, so uh, <laughs> it just bled a lot. It wasn't that bad, but it just bled a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I got some really badass pictures from it, which is really what matters, isn't it? But um, hey, it worked for Foley, so yeah, exactly. I I'm hardcore. I'm hardcore. Um, but yeah, that wasn't that bad, but I think in the time, all of the, like, anxiety and the adrenaline, I was just thinking, I was like, it's really going to suck if I pass out right now. I wasn't even <laughs> thinking about the fact that it was my mouth that's going to bleed a lot. I was mm -hmm. just like, wow, this is a lot of blood. I could pass out at any second. And then uh, I wanted to do a crossbody, and I just fell well you learn <laughs> you know it was it was people still said that they had fun watching it people mm. still cheered and that's really what matters you know i had fun doing it so it happens to everyone mm -hmm. at least it was a pre-show match right yeah so. plus it's like people do embarrassing stuff in the ring all the time i feel like the normal wrestling fan or really anyone in wrestling Everything goes by so fast. You see so many things that things that we think is the most tragic thing that's ever happened to us. They're not going to remember it in like five minutes mm -hmm. or they don't even know what happened. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, at the time and for like the first day or so, it was pretty traumatizing. But now I can laugh at it. <laughs> awesome. So where can people find you online? Um. My Facebook is 
Yes, slash wrestling's jinx. My Instagram, which I probably use more frequently than anything, is bloody underscore adorable. And then my Twitter is bloody X adorable. Yay. (laughs) Yeah, that's what I got. Awesome. Go check her out. She's also a part of International Wrestling Cartel and shows up with Black Diamond Wrestling, mm-hmm. IWCWrestling.com. A couple of shows coming up here in West Virginia at the yeah. Wheeling Casino. If anything, I'll definitely be there mm-hmm. to say hi. Mm-hmm. Always. And of course, you'll be around for Night of the Superstar 6 happening yep. in Meadville, PA. Yeah. Uh, these are, uh, hey, I'm looking over at the poster beside Just, you, yeah. April 8th and April 7th respectively, uh, for those shows. You can get more information at IWCWrestling.com or check out any other, if you're catching this later, any other IWC shows coming up uh, uh, after that. I'm sure she's going to be popping up a bit on those. So thank you so much for joining us and uh, check out the rest of the interviews at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Over, I think over 150 of these we've done for Indie Mayhem Show. Um, you know, go, 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 go see them. You know, Baby Britt Br- Br- Baker, Baby, uh, Baby, Baby, Delilah Doom, way before anybody knew who they were, and you know, hopefully we'll have you back in a year and have yeah. some cool things to talk about too. So, so absolutely. Um, thank you everybody for joining us, and until next time, please support indie wrestling. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at Sorgatron Media dot com.